and welcome to today's session. Uh, this is Teacher Webinar 12. It is um, the final part in our series and today's topic is how to make financial planning fun for students. So for those of you that haven't joined one of our webinars before, um, today's webinar is brought to you by Teach Man to Fish. We are an educational charity based in the United Kingdom whose mission is to empower young people with the skills that they need to succeed in school, work and life. And my name is India Jankel and I work on our wonderful educational program, the School Enterprise Challenge. And my co-host today is Susanna in South Africa. So before we start, um, I'll just go through some quick housekeeping rules. Um, you'll notice that you're all on mute at the moment, um, and I kindly ask you to remain muted during the session, um, unless I call upon you to share, just to make sure that we can all hear each other clearly. Uh, but there will be lots of opportunities to interact. So you're very welcome to leave your comments and any questions that you have throughout the session in the chat box and Susanna will be responding to them. You can also use the icons on screen to give feedback, um, to ask me to speak more quickly or more slowly, give me a thumbs up if you agree with what I'm saying. Um, and, and as well, we'll be using polls and breakout rooms later on, um, but I will explain a bit more about how they'll work when we get there. So that being said, let's take a look at what we'll be covering today. So the duration of the webinar will be um, around one hour. We've got lots of exciting things to get through. So um, we'll begin by looking at some business basics. So defining income costs and profit. Then I will be introducing you to a nice activity, the marketplace simulation. Then we'll have a look at the process of financial planning. Um, and go on to look at how to calculate the income costs and profit for your own school business, as well as some of our top tips. Then we'll have a look at another couple of fun activities you can do with your students, um, a pop quiz and a fill in the gaps exercise before ending with how to calculate your startup budget and um, an activity in breakout rooms. Uh, at the end of the webinar, I will share with you all a link to a survey and when you complete the survey, you will receive your certificate of attendance. And I'll also be sharing these presentation slides with you by email, so um, there's no need to make a note of what's on screen. Okay, so before we dive into that content, I thought it would be fun to begin with a little icebreaker game so I can understand a bit more about how you're all feeling about financial planning. So to do that, you will need to annotate the screen. So if you're accessing this webinar on your computer, um, you just need to click on view options and then click on annotate, and then you can select a stamp to mark the screen. If you are accessing on your phone, then just click on um, the blue and white pen in the bottom left-hand corner of your screen and then click on color. Um, and let me show you what we're going to be annotating. Here are some different pictures. So please have a go at annotating the screen. I would love to know, how do you feel about the topic of financial planning? Which of these photos best represents how you feel? Are you comfortable and happy with it? Are you, um, do you feel nervous? Do you feel excited, worried, scared? Let me know. <laughs> okay, we've got a bit of a mixed bag at the moment. A few people seem to be feeling pretty happy already. Some people are a bit confused. Some people look a bit terrified. Hopefully by the end of this session, uh, you'll all leave feeling a bit more comfortable and confident, those of you um, that aren't too sure just yet. Um, okay, so Susanna, if you could, oh, and someone says they're happy, wonderful. Okay, um, Susanna, if you could clear the screen, that'd be great. And um, let's get going. So I'm gonna begin by talking briefly about um, what a business is and why businesses do what they do. 
because it will help to set the scene for what we'll be talking about in today's webinar. So um, as I'm sure most of you know, a business is any organization um, that makes goods or products or provides services. And why do businesses exist? To make money. Um, businesses aim to make a profit and profit is simply the money you make given how much you sell, subtracting how much it costs you to produce what you're selling. And we will be looking at that in more detail later. And in the context of the school enterprise challenge, there are so many reasons why it's important for your school business to make a profit. Uh, making a profit will give you the opportunity to, for your students to learn what it takes to run a business which makes money, um, through which they'll develop really valuable business knowledge and transferable skills, which will um, help them not only in their academic life, but after school too. Um, as well as that, earning a profit will enable them to reinvest in growing the business so that more students can get involved with it um, in the years to come and benefit from taking part as well. It could also allow them to support your school's educational activities. So often um, in the past, school businesses have chosen to invest their profits in, for example, providing bursaries to support lower income students or buying textbooks. Um, or indeed to support your school's running costs, um, for example, painting classrooms, building toilet blocks, whatever is needed to um, maintain and improve your school and your educational activities. And finally, many schools choose to donate their business profits to um, a charity, to a social or environmental cause that's really important to the students. So, um, as you can see, running a profitable school business presents so many exciting possibilities for your students to develop their skills and to decide what they would like to spend their, their hard-earned cash on. So one of the first ways that you can make business finances fun for students is, is simply by getting them excited about all the wonderful opportunities that will open up if their business makes a profit. So let's take a closer look then at how you can know if your business is making a profit or not. So at Teach Amount to Fish, we have been supporting schools for over 10 years to plan, set up and run student led businesses. So we really appreciate and understand um, the challenges and the fears that young people and indeed often teachers have around finances. Um, so we have broken financial planning down into its simplest form so that anyone can understand it. Um, accounting teachers may say that it's a little bit more complicated, um, but for the School Enterprise Challenge, we have tried to make planning your business finances really as simple um, and as easy as it can be, so anyone could do it. So um, you can think of your business finances as a balancing act. And income is simply the money that comes into your business, which you receive from selling something, so selling your product or service. So the income is the money that you receive into the business through sales. On the other hand, costs um, are the money that goes out of your business. It's the money that you spend on producing your product or service and running your business. So, um, for example, if you're running a tailoring business, your income would be the money that you make from selling um, the clothes that you make, and your costs would be the money that you spend to make and sell those clothes. So, for example, the cloth, um, the thread, the scissors, and anything else that you need to run your business, like uh, wages if you employ staff, or um, rent and electricity if you have, um, if you're using a factory or you rent a shop, for example. So coming back to the balancing act, if your income is more than your costs, so you make more money from selling your clothes than it costs you to produce them, you're making a profit, happy days. But if your income is less than your costs, so in other words, if it costs you more to make the clothes 
than the money that you bring into the business from selling them, then you're making a loss. And for younger students, um, it might help to explain this balancing act with objects at first rather than money. So it's as simple as this. If someone gives you five apples and you think of that as your income and you give away three apples, you can think of those as your costs, then you're left with two apples and that is your profit. So the same logic applies when you think about income, costs and profit in terms of money. It's just um, bigger numbers. And a nice way to um, help students to understand this concept of give and take and balancing is with a simulation. This is such a fun way um, for students to start to appreciate the value of money and making a profit before they get to the stage of um, selling their product and service with real money. So to do this activity, um, you'll explain to your class that today, we're going to hold um, a marketplace simulation in class. And the aim of the activity is to make the most amount of money that you can. And um, as teachers, if you would like, you could award a small prize to the winning team, but this isn't essential. So after you've explained to students um, what the aim of the game is, I'll, I'll run you through the, now the instructions of how the activity works. So um, the first part of the activity, this will take about 20 minutes. And um, what you'll do is split your, your bigger group of students into smaller teams of about four to five students and give each team five dollars. Now, a couple of notes on that. We'll talk in dollars today because you are an international audience from all over the world. Um, but when you do this with your students, you can, of course, use your local currency. And um, it does not need to be real money. Um, you can do this with paper, you, like kind of like Monopoly money, you can make paper, um, or you could use objects like um, coins of different colors to represent um, different values of money, for example. So you'll split your, your students into teams of four to five and give each team their $5 of um, startup capital. So with their startup capital, they will buy um, any products that are in your shop, the teacher's shop. And you can set up your shop with real items that you've got um, lying around the classroom, or you could print off or draw pictures of items um, and label them with different prices. So you'll tell your student teams um, that they need to decide together in their teams what they would like to buy from the shop and you can give them about five or ten minutes to do this so they'll need to think carefully um, and they'll need to agree together are they going to buy lots of the same item for a low cost or are they going to buy different items so they, ha they have a range of items or will they choose to pick just one or two or three of the more expensive items to buy um, so invite your teams of students to come and buy from your shop with their $5 of startup capital. Um, and this will be done on a first come first serve basis. So once the students have made their selections and bought their items, once it's gone, it's gone. Um, okay, where am I on my slide? Here we go. After that, once the teams have bought their um, items, the next step is for them to make marketing materials for their stall. So you can give them around 20 minutes for this bit um, and encourage the teams to really use their creativity to come up with the best marketing materials that they can possible for their stall. So they could um, design signs on bits of paper. They could come up with like a sketch um, or a, a pitch or even a jingle, like a little song. Um, after that, it will be time nearly to open your marketplace. So first of all, um, before you open the marketplace, give each individual student $2 to spend. Again, this can be the same fake money from before. Um, and explain that this $2, it's different to the $5 startup capital they had at the beginning. 
So this $2 um, is for the individual students to spend in the marketplace um, and it won't form part of their team's profits at the end of the activity. Once everybody's got their $2 spending money, then it is time to open the marketplace. So you can run this for around 10 to 15 minutes. Um, and for this part of the game, the students will need to split themselves up. So from their original teams of four to five, um, you could have a couple of students that are manning their stall and trying to sell the items which um, they originally bought from the teacher shop whilst the other students in the team are walking around to visit the other stalls um, and spending their two dollars spending money to buy to buy items after that um, the final part of the activity is for the teams to cash up so you'll close the marketplace, you'll explain that there's going to be no more buying or selling now. Um, and now the students need to cash up and um, work out how much profit they have made. So to do this, um, the teams need to add up the cost of the items that they bought initially from the teacher's shop. Then um, add up the income that they received from the items that they sold to other students at the marketplace. And finally, work out their profit by subtracting their costs from their income. And then if you like, you could give students a little table um, format to help them with these calculations. Um, and after that, you can end the activity with with a group reflection to find out um, how students found it and, and what they learned from the simulation. So some good questions to ask would be, um, first of all, did you make exactly the same amount of profit as you thought that you would at the start? Or did you make more or did you make less? And why do you think that is? Um, you could ask, is everybody clear exactly how much profit they made? Um, and if you're not sure whether you made a profit or not, what could you do differently next time to help you know? Um, and I'll give you a little hint. Uh, a good answer is to keep good financial records. So as you can imagine, if the students were to write down everything that they spent um, when they bought the items at the beginning, and then all of the money that they received when they sold the items, it would be much easier to calculate their profit at the end. And a final reflection question is, what advice would you give to someone um, starting a business for the first time, having been through this experience? So um, there you have it, that's the marketplace activity. I think it's such a nice interactive one to get students excited about the prospect of selling their product or service and making money. Um, and the way that I have described it, with the five parts in total, you could do this in a little over one hour, um, plus a little bit of time to prepare um, your, your money and the products for sale at the beginning. Um, but if you have more time, it works really well as um, a half day activity, so a morning or an afternoon activity. Um, and if you have that much time, you can get your students to make their own products to sell, a bit like um, the prototyping that we spoke about in an earlier um, webinar. And I've, I've played it myself in workshops with students and adults, and it always goes down such a treat. So I highly recommend it. Um, and I have some photos here on screen from um, when we did this activity in South Africa. So I would like to invite uh, Susanna now to tell you all a little bit more about that. Thanks, India. Yeah, so um, we did this activity as a kind of half day kind of business simulation activity um, where learners went through the process of um, doing some market research, speaking to their colleagues, working out how they were going to do their operational plan and set up and run uh, their little mini business. And the picture I think is on the right of the screen with all the boxes and the two circular buckets in front. Those were little um, kind of business in a box um, toolkits. So we put all the items that um, the learners would need 
to actually make those products um, that were in the box that they could then sell in their marketplace. And then the other two pictures are um, the learners in the marketplace <laughs> selling their products. And it was really, really, really interesting. And um, each learner, we had some colored like matchsticks and each of them represented a different amount of money. And so they could buy their, um, the products in the marketplace. Um, it was really interesting. Some learners like did not make the profit that they wanted to at all or what they thought they would. And there was a hell of a lot of learning in the reflection that came out of that. Um, you know, whether it's that they charged too much, too little, they um, didn't keep the financial records that they thought, so they couldn't tell. Um, the products weren't as well um, created or developed as, as, as others. So other people, the other, the other products were, were more popular. Um, just trying to think of all the learning. Um, so yeah, there was a lot of learning that they could then take to when they were actually gonna run their business. And so this was almost like a dry run for the real thing. So it's a really useful, if you have time, it's a useful activity to do. Um, and it's like so much fun. <laughs> yeah. Great. Thank you so much, Susanna, for sharing. Um, OK, so let us move on from that. As I was saying, you may have gathered by now that um, the financial plan is one of the most important parts of your business plan. So why do you think that having a financial plan is so important? Um, I would really appreciate it if you could share in your own words in the comments. Um, why do you think having a financial plan is really important? I'll give you 30 seconds or so to have a think and type your answers in the chat box. Okay, brilliant. Uh, Penita. Love these comments. Panita says it's to make maximum profit. Uh, Manoj says it's because failing to plan is planning to fail. What a great catchphrase. I definitely agree. Um, Rosie, to make a profit to the max. Absolutely right. Thank you so much, everyone, for your comments. So um, as you've all said, a strong financial plan um, will help to make sure that you're going to run your business in a way that can generate a profit not a loss. And financial planning is important for many reasons because it helps you to, first of all, manage your cash. So um, it will help you to see what costs you have coming up and what you can afford to spend. So that will help you to manage your business more smoothly. Secondly, um, it can help you to support your business growth and your goals because um, creating a financial plan makes you think about the, the future goals of your business. In other words, how much profit you would like to make at the end um, and how you can plan to achieve those goals. Thirdly, um, it helps you to spot trends. So because creating a financial plan involves setting targets, as I say, how much um, profit you want to make, uh, which you can then compare your actual results to later on, it can help you to see the impact um, of your strategy and your decision making. So for example, your pricing strategy, um, the products you've chosen to sell, your different marketing efforts and so on. And fourthly, um, it can help you to identify your most important expenditures so that you can prioritize the spending that will be, bring about the most um, immediate improvements to your business productivity and efficiency. So um, coming back to the tailoring business example, um, you might, your students might decide that a crucial expenditure would be um, buying a sewing machine because they need that to get their business off the ground. Um, but they might decide through creating their financial plan, for example, that they can hold off from buying, I don't know, um, fabric in a hundred different colors um, and that it would be better to wait until they have more cash um, after they've set up their business and they're making a profit and of course more feedback on um, exactly what their customers want. So um, now that we've had a look at some of the reasons why creating a financial plan is so important, let's think now about um, what might stop you or what might hold you back from creating one. So um, 
hands up if you feel like you need to be a maths expert um, that's a common misconception i'm sure that most of you aren't maths teachers um, and the good news is that you actually only need to know how to do simple calculations um, addition subtraction and multiplication and don't forget you can always use a calculator if you have one that is absolutely fine um, and this is also a good opportunity to remind students that um, creating a financial plan is, will help them to put into practice what they've learned in, in maths lessons, maybe in accountancy, uh, with this real world, real life example. Secondly, um, you might be thinking that creating a financial plan sounds really complicated and it's going to take such a long time, it's not really worth doing. But actually, uh, through your market research, you've already done lots of the hard work already. So you already know what you're going to sell, um, what your customers want, what will be popular, and what price you could sell it at. So your financial plan will just help you to pull this together and make sure that you can cover your costs and still make a profit uh, based on what you plan to sell. Um, and after all that, you might still be thinking that you don't really need a financial plan just yet. You'd rather just get going and think about your finances later. But um, it is essential that you create a financial plan now before you start making sales um, so that you can make sure that you won't be running your business at a loss because we really don't want all of your hard work to go to waste. So it really is worth the time doing it now. So that being said, let's move on to take a look at how to calculate your income. Uh, there's a simple financial plan table in the School Enterprise Challenge business plan template for your students to fill out, um, which we will go through together now. But I just wanted to mention that so you know that it's there and you can refer back to it. You don't need to create your own. So in order to calculate your um, predicted income, your students will start off by listing the products or services that they plan to sell. So sticking with the tailoring example, we're thinking that your students are gonna be selling t-shirts and trousers. Then based on your market research and the period of time that you're creating this plan for, for example, um, the next six months, then you will estimate the quantity of items that you can sell in that time and what price you will sell them for. So for example, um, 40 t-shirts for $2 each and 15 trousers for $3 each. So, so far, so good. Now there's just two simple calculations to do. Um, the first one is that you will multiply the quantity by the sales price um, for each item to work out your sales income per item. So for example, we've got 40 t-shirts at $2 per t-shirt, that'll be $80 income from the t-shirts. Then you have 15 pairs of trousers for $3 each, that's $45 income from the trousers. And that's as complicated as it gets because the final thing to do is to simply add up the sales income per item to work out your total sales income. So for example, $80 plus $45 is $125. And that is all there is to it. So um, now let's have a look at some of our top tips for estimating income. So the first one is, although um, it's great to aim high because we all want to end up with a big profit at the end, it's still important to be realistic and um, to make sure that your plan is achievable. Um, so get your students to think about um, what quantity of products or services will they realistically be able to sell in the time that they have available. Secondly, um, think about which items will be most popular and how much your customers are willing to pay. Um, and you can refer back to your market research to find uh, some of this information. 
And my third top tip is check your calculations. Um, after you've filled in the table, double check that everything has been um, added up correctly. You don't want to find, for example, that you've missed up a zero or something. I can't emphasize that enough. Uh, check and check again. Um, so that was income. So now let's have a look at how to calculate your costs. And what's great is that the process is very similar. So you've got this far and I promise it doesn't get any harder than this. Um, so there's really nothing to worry about. So to calculate your costs, um, you will start by listing the costs um, that you will incur to make and sell your product or service. So for example, material and thread um, to make the clothes for your, for your tailoring business. Um, and here you want to make sure um, that the costs that you estimate match um, like the quantity of items that you predicted you would sell. So you'll list the items that you need um, for the tailoring business. I put it as example, material and thread. Next, you will list the quantity of those items that you will need and the cost per item. So for the quantity, make sure to include the unit so it's really clear. So here we've got 50 meters of material, two packs of thread, um, whatever it may be, the unit. Next, you will list the cost um, of one unit of those items. So for example, it's $1 for one meter of material, it's 50 cents for one pack of thread. Next, um, you will multiply the quantity by the cost per item to work out the total cost per item. So for example, um, you need to buy 50 meters of material at $1 per meter, so that's gonna cost you $50. And you need to buy two packs of thread at 50 cents per pack, that's gonna cost you $1. And finally, simply add up the costs um, for each of the items in your table on the right hand side to work out your overall total costs. So in this example, $50 plus $1 is $51. And that is your overall total costs. So let's take a look now um, at some top tips for this part of the financial plan for estimating your costs. So the first one, um, obviously at this stage, you cannot be 100% certain um, about exactly which costs you will incur. So this will be your best estimations. Um, but that's why it's all the more important to make sure that your costs have been accurately researched um, by getting quotes from real suppliers, rather than just guessing how much um, you think it will cost you to buy these things. And this is such a great learning opportunity for your um, students to try to strike a deal with their suppliers. Uh, the second tip is to think about the fact that you might not have to buy everything um, that you'll need for your business. So see what you have available at school or at home, which you could um, use for free. Um, and if something is donated to your business uh, by a parent or a community member or something, it's still useful to include those items in your table of costs. But for those, you can just put the, the price as zero dollars. Um, that way, when you have finished your financial plan, it will be really clear because you'll have all of the items listed in one place um, and you can make sure that nothing has been forgotten. And finally, um, when you're filling in this part of the financial plan and listing your costs, you should get your students to not only think about the materials that they will need. Um, so for the tailoring business, their, their, their um, fabric, their scissors, their buttons, their thread, um, but also any indirect costs associated with running the business. So these are things like um, the cost of printing flyers, um, the cost of getting transport to travel to the market where you're going to sell your clothes, um, paying for any external uh, employees and so on. 
Okay, so um, now that you know how to calculate your income and how to calculate your costs, the final step is to work out if you are making a profit or a loss. And you already know how to do that because um, we spoke about it already earlier. But I'll just go through it again now in a bit more detail. So profit is the difference between your income and costs. So if your income is higher than your costs, you're making a profit. But if your costs are higher, you're making a loss. So all you need to do is simply subtract your total um, estimated costs from your total estimated income. Um, following our example then, $125 um, of income from the tailoring business minus the $51 of costs uh, would leave you with a, a healthy profit of $74. And once you've launched your business, it's a good idea to monitor your profit levels by regularly checking your actual income against your actual costs. Okay, so now we are going to play a short game to check our understanding of the difference between income, costs, and profit. And um, we're going to do this now because you can play an activity like this with your students using a made up business and um, made up numbers so that your students can get the hang of how the calculations work before they create um, the financial plan for their own school business. So um, to play this game, once again, we are going to use the annotate function. And um, so if you're on your computer, you'll need to click on view options, then annotate um, and then stamps. And if you're on your phone, you'll be clicking on the blue and white pen in the bottom left hand corner and then color. So um, for the game, to set the scene, imagine that you plan to set up a business making and selling recycled handbags. And you plan to sell 25 handbags at $10 each. And each bag costs you $2 to make. And the costs involved in packaging and marketing and transporting all of the bags is $60. So that's the context and I'm going to ask you a few questions. The first question is, what would be your total income? Would it be $25, would it be $190, or would it be $250? So please cast your vote. You can mark on the screen where you think the answer is. Those of you that have voted already are all in agreement, but I'll um, give you a few more minutes. See if anybody else, minutes, sorry, seconds. See if anybody else thinks uh, the answer is different. Okay, we've got a couple of votes for 190, um, but the vast majority of you think that the answer is $250. So, a few more votes for 190. Let's reveal the answer. 250, so it's 250 because your income is the money coming into your business from sales. Uh, you plan to sell 25 handbags at $10 each, so 25 times 10 is 250. So thanks everybody for voting, playing along. Um, Susanna will clear the screen now, and then we will go to the second question. Okay, second question. Same, the, the first paragraph is exactly the same, I haven't changed the numbers. Um, so you plan to sell 25 handbags for $10 each. Each bag costs you $2 to make, and the costs involved in packaging and marketing and transporting all of the bags is $60. So what would be your total costs? Would it be $50, or would it be $110, or, or sorry, $85? I love how quickly you started voting on that. You'd obviously been thinking about it before I even put the, uh, the options up on screen.
everyone seems to be in agreement on this one. So let me reveal the answer. It is $110. Great job. Um, so each bag costs you $2 to make. That's $50 to make the bags. And then the indirect costs are $60 altogether. So 50 plus 60 is 110. Final question. What will be your total profit? Again, I haven't changed any of the numbers at the top. Uh, the context is still the same. So would your profit be $140, $190 or $250? The votes are rolling in. Once again, you seem to be in agreement. Great job, it's $140. So all of you all of you who said at the beginning that you found finances scary and that you weren't too sure how to do it, clearly you've learned something because um, you've all got the answer to the last two right. So great job. Um, so I wanted to, to show you that because you can play a game or a quiz a bit like that with your students um, or it, um, another nice um, way for students to practice completing a, fi a financial plan is with a fill in the gaps um, activity a bit like this one on screen. So we won't play this together now. Um, but I just wanted to give you an idea of another activity um, that you could do with your students to help them prepare them to create their own financial plan. Um, so you can provide a template like this where um, some of the information has been filled in. So, for example, we've got the sales price um, and the total sales income for tomatoes, but I've left blank the quantity of tomatoes. Um, so your students can fill in that row um, and then practice the different calculations um, to fill in the whole template. A couple of people have kindly um, given their answer quite right. Seven tomatoes at one dollar each, that'll give you seven dollars. So there you go. That's another nice activity that you can do with um, your students to help them get comfortable um, with, with financial planning and, and with these calculations. Okay, so um, we'll leave the annotation there. And now that you know how to predict your income and your costs and how much profit you will make once your business is up and running, the final thing to do is to work out how much money you need to actually start your business. And uh, this is called your startup budget. Um, to calculate your startup budget, you will follow the same process as when you calculated your costs. Um, I mean, the logic is the same, but um, what, you will, what you will include here is a little bit different. So let me explain. So this time around, um, you will start by listing the equipment and the supplies that you need to start up your business for the first time. So equipment startup items um, are the things that you need to start your business that um, are expected to last a long time. So um, for at least three years, uh, for example, um, as I said earlier, you might need a sewing machine if you've got a, you're planning a tailoring business. Um, you might need an oven for a bakery or um, in this example, you might need a shovel for your, your vegetable farming business. And on the other hand, um, the supplies that you need to start up your business um, are the things that you need to buy to start your business that can only be used once and then they're used up. So the cloth and thread to start making your first batch of clothes or um, the seeds and manure in this example to start your vegetable business. And once your business is up and running, um, you'll be able to, to buy more of these from the income that you're generating. So for the time being, just list the amount that you need to get your business started. So you will list the quantity of these items that you need and the cost per item. Next, you will multiply um, the quantity by the cost per item 
to work out the total cost per item um, for your startup equipment and supplies in just the same way as you did with your costs earlier. And finally, um, you'll add up the figures in the total cost column on the right hand side to work out your overall startup budget. Um, and now that you know how much money that you need to get your business started, um, you can start planning to make it a reality. So that is um, that is all there is there all there is to it to how to create a financial plan and um, prepare your startup budget for your school business. Um, and we've covered everything that you need to know to create a strong financial plan for your school business and to have a bit of fun while you're doing it. Um, and I would like to end today's session with a small group activity using the breakout rooms. So um, for those of you that haven't, um, haven't been in a breakout room in a Zoom webinar before, um, in a moment I'm going to automatically assign you to breakout rooms. Um, you don't need to click anything, you should be moved there straight away. Um, and in the breakout room, you'll need to talk to your, your small group. So please, please do turn on your microphone. Um, and if, if you would like to, you can turn on your camera as well. Um, it's always very sad when there's only one person in the group who's joining in. So please do turn on your microphone and get involved. Um, and if you need any help from me, then you can click the ask for help button and then invite host. So um, for this reflection activity, what I'd like you to do is in your small groups for three minutes, I would like you to discuss this question. What could you do if your financial plan shows that you'll make a loss, not a profit? Um, and it would be great if you could try to think of some specific strategies, come up with some specific suggestions for how you could turn it around um, and plan your business in such a way that you might make a profit rather than a loss. And um, at the end, when I bring you back to the main room, um, I might invite one or two of you to share what you discussed and come up with if we still have time. How did you find that? I um, would be interested to know um, what you came up with. So if anybody would like um, to share the ideas and the strategies that you thought of, how you would deal with this situation. Um, if you completed your financial plan and found that you were making a loss rather than a profit, please um, do write your comments in the chat box or you can unmute yourself and share with the group. Uh, Ma'am, as we have discussed in our group, uh, what we came out is that might be uh, there uh, we need to do a market research again maybe we are lacking somewhere in the market research or we are not exactly uh, making the product as per the uh, like maybe there is a pro problem with the pro product or maybe the quality of the product or uh, even the advertisement part there are so many uh, factors that are going to make uh, my plan uh, that can convert my plan into a profitable one rather than a loss Great points, Ranjit. Thank you for sharing. Um, I think um, what you mentioned about doing more market research is especially important when um, you actually launch your business. Um, if you discover that after having launched and started selling your products for real, you're not making the profit that you predicted. That's a great um, time to go back and do a bit more market research and find out why it might be that your um, your products and services aren't selling as well as you expected. Um, but I would add, um, and this also helps to answer, there was a question in the comments from Aminal, who was saying, um, asking, um, saying, sorry, that they have a, a, a business um, which is, um, works in electrical products like LED and energy light repairing, TV, mobile repairing, um, and they were asking um, uh, for a strategy to get more profit. So um, for that question and for this question that you were discussing in groups, I would just invite you to remember about that balancing act. So if your business is, um, only, is, is operating at a loss, um, it means that your costs are higher than your income. So there's two ways to address that. Um, 
you can either try to increase your income so you could look at um, some of the higher value higher ticket products and um, that you might be able to sell um, that would increase your income but you could also look to reduce to lower your costs um, so as I mentioned earlier could you is there anything that you could get for free um, or could you haggle bargain strike a deal um, to get some of your to get your costs down um, from your suppliers um, so yeah that's just my my two cents worth um, I'm sure you all came up with lots of great answers in your groups as well although I'm afraid that we don't have have time to hear from everybody now um, but just to end I would love to find out now that we've reached the end of the webinar um, I'm going to ask you the same question again that we started with which picture best represents how you feel about financial planning um, you can annotate the screen for the final time go wild let me know um, how do you feel about financial planning We've got lots of happy faces so far. That's wonderful. Amazing. Um, I just uh, wanted to add uh, to one of to Silla's question earlier and um, been following up in the chat. Um, so yeah, and thank you for those of you who that also added some comments to that as well. Great. Um, I can see also lots of hearts on the smiley face. That's so that that's wonderful. Um, hopefully you all um, have found something positive to, to take away from today's session and you'll find feeling, feeling a bit more confident. Um, it is a process though, so you're not going to um, learn it overnight necessarily if it's something um, that has all, you've always felt a bit worried about. So if you're not feeling 100% confident just yet, don't worry. Um, practice makes perfect. So take the time to read through the business guides um, that the School Enterprise Challenge provides. And remember that you can also always come back and watch this webinar anytime you like. Um, it'll be uploaded on YouTube channel shortly. So um, Susanna, if you don't mind clearing the screen and I'll just run through these useful resources um, to draw your attention to. We have a video on our YouTube channel on um, financial planning for school businesses, which we filmed at Bharti Public School in India. Um, so there you can see how the students went through this process of financial planning um, for real and how they found it and how they went about it. So that's a great one um, to, to watch with your students. Um, and also to draw your attention to the relevant business guides that will help you with all things finance related. Um, there is number four, which will give you lots of ideas on how to raise the startup capital once you've calculated your startup budget and you know how much money you need to start your business. Guide number four will give you some ideas of how you can raise that money. Guide number eight is on writing your financial plan. Um, so it explains in more detail everything that we've talked about today. If you'd like to refer back to it, um, and to access the templates for calculating your cost and your income and your startup budget. Um, guide number nine is on deciding how to spend your profits, which is such an exciting and important um, step in the business planning process that we strongly recommend that you do before you start making sales. Um, and finally, guide number 12 on accounting and record keeping. So today we've been talking about how to plan your income costs and profit. But once you launch your business, um, your students will need to keep track of their actual income costs um, and their profit to know whether they're making a profit or not. Um, and guide number 12 explains exactly how to do it. So if you're not already registered for the School Enterprise Challenge, um, you can access all of these guides by registering. It's free at www.schoolenterprisechallenge.org. Um, you can find the links to the earlier webinars in this series in case you missed them. They're all on our YouTube channel um, and on these slides. And finally, as always, you can get your certificate of attendance for today's webinar by filling in this short survey, which I will post in the chat box now.
Um, it's been such a pleasure having you with us all today. I really hope that you've enjoyed it um, and learned how to make financial planning a bit more fun for your students. Um, I really appreciate you all getting so involved, sharing your comments. Um, it's been a great session and thank you very much for joining us. Thank you and thanks India. Uh, Susanna and I will just stay here for another couple of minutes in case um, you have any final questions, but uh, you're, you're, you're free to go now, this is all, and I will be sharing the slides and again the link to the survey um, by email by, um, by tomorrow. Okay, it seems like there aren't any, um, any final questions, so I will be ending the session now. Thanks again for joining, it was a pleasure to have you with us. Um, and have a great morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are. Bye.